Don't give up, Sheena! I've already leveled you past the max! You're in god mode now! Try summoning your power from with- Hold strong! Keep your head up! You- I can't! I never- Had it in me!
everyone else's. But I'm the only one left. Don't give up. Don't give in to this- I... can't... Sheena! Behind you! Watch out! <laughs> Sheena! A monster, infected by a deadly virus, opened its sinister maw. and sank its razor-sharp fangs into her flesh, locking its jaw onto her before spitting her out. <coughs> Thick droplets of her blood were splattered onto the dirt. Gashes on her abdomen exposed her spinal cord and vital organs. She made two tepid steps backward, before crumbling to the ground like a marionette with snipped strings. Damn it! Sheena! As shock set in, she struggled to make sense of what was happening around her. With a last, desperate breath, she uttered. licked its lips, its taste for blood slowly driving it toward the meek and bloodied prey before it. Its nostrils flared, savoring the anticipation before snapping its jaws around the girl's head and heaving it into the empty sky. Her freshly removed spinal cord trailed behind her mangled head like a nightmarish comet. Her headless body slammed into the dirt, color draining out of it as it settled into the ever-growing pool of blood. Sheena! Ah! Sheena! 
Damn it! I couldn't save her in time! God! Buddha! Whoever the hell is listening! Damn you! This... This death end is horrific! You... You... What is your purpose? God damn it! You... staring at me. Who are you?
Are you God? Or what does the end of the world mean? It's just a dream. What did it mean? Huh? Where am I? Whose house am I in? Actually, who am I? Um, what the? They're wrapped so tight. What are they? Huh? They look like spider legs. Yuck. They gross me out. <laughs> What's this? What's going on here? What's this?
Yes. What's this? Yeah! 
Uh, 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 uh. Huh? Did someone scream just now? to kill it. Uh, are you all right? <laughs> A little bruised is all... Forgive me. Uh, it's all my fault. No. I'm just glad you're... Oh, you are far more heroic than you look. Allow me to extend my gra... I would appreciate... On the contrary, I should be the one thanking you for saving me. <laughs> ah, pardon me, I haven't yet introduced myself. My name is Rook. As you have likely gathered by now, I am a traveling mer- Nice to meet you. A pleasure. Uh, lately, martyrs have been taking to crowding these trails, uh, making it impossible for me to sell my wares in peace. Um, what's a martyr? Oh. Uh, well, you see, I actually just woke up a few moments ago with no recollection of how I got there. My memory's fuzzy. What? Oh, how awful. Uh, martyrs are monsters that have been touched by the kiss of madness. Yes, for a few months now, reports of monsters attacking people have been increasing to a frightening degree. What? Did you say a few months? How did I not remember any of this? Much has changed in the last year. Do you really remember nothing? Not a thing. Not even what you ate yesterday? Nope. Most unfortunate. 
Well, I can't let it bring me down. Things will turn up sooner or later. What makes you say that? Mother always told me that someone up there is watching out for me. I see. Your mother sounds like a devout woman. Surely our Lord will shine upon you with his blessings. Amnesia is nothing to scoff at. I can imagine how confusing all of this must be. So I will try to help you in the meantime. Then, would you mind catching me up on everything I've missed? Uh, hmm, uh... uh well, uh, you needn't burden yourself with the sad tale of this fallen world. Some things are better left unsaid. I want to know it all. Please, tell me. Very well, then. Allow me to tell you about the Entoma Scourge. One year ago, the world as we had known it ceased to exist. On that fateful day, a terrifying beast came down from the heavens and unleashed catastrophe across the entire country. What? What do you mean? What's an entoma? The entoma was a curse from the gods, a living, breathing embodiment of atrocity, brought to life by the despicable sins committed by our people. Vanity and greed became the gospels of our time. The rich became richer, and the poor became poorer. Soon, it seemed people had forgotten how to love. In no time at all, the thin fabric holding friends and family together was torn asunder. Constant threats of war and invasion gave corrupt nobles the chance to tax every cent from out of their subjects' pockets. Desperation birthed from a widening gap betwixt the rich and poor. Thievery and violence became commonplace. Lo the nobility cackled atop their high towers, taking pleasure in watching their subjects turn on one another while they sipped their wine. The notion of salvation became a fool's currency. Eventually, the destitute and starving citizens had reached a point of no return. One by one, they fell to their knees onto the ragged earth, begging for death as mercy from their constant suffering. Memories of our vibrant past were tossed into the graves of those brave enough to remember them. That is, until the scourge had ripped the heavens in half without warning. It cut through the sky like steel through flesh, flattened our mountain ranges, and ruined our forests and seas with a divine rainbow light. The beast itself had later become known as Heaven's Messenger, striking fear into the hearts of those unlucky enough to cross its path. Furious with our people's disregard for life, God saw fit to punish us without warning. We had no choice but to accept. Heavens, messenger, divine punishment? Within ten days, the beast destroyed not only Hartis, but each of the surrounding kingdoms as well. Mankind was beside itself, without recourse or any chance of retaliation. Men, women, and children were being killed, left and right.
Just when we thought that all hope was lost, our long-awaited salvation had finally arrived. The monster's body had suddenly frozen and shattered into pieces. What happened to it? That, I do not know. All we know for certain is, the monster's shattered fragments rained down upon our world, leaving little behind save for its terrible memory in our minds. Spared from their accursed tyranny, the people celebrated in the streets. So there are survivors aside from us. Yes, although few and far between. Some of them still live in small enclaves. However, the fact that you lack any recollection of this event means you were asleep, not for a few months, but for over a year. <laughs> I have no idea how I lost my memory, so I'll just have to fill in the blanks somehow. I appreciate you taking the time to recount what I've missed. Seems like I've got a lot of catching up to do. Ah, you impress me. It's rare to find someone whose nose is still pointed towards the future. Uh, Sheena, uh, there's a bit more to this story. Many who survived the calamity experienced a strange emotional shift proclaiming to dedicate their lives to piety. People had interpreted their salvation as a miracle and thus were eager to pay it forth to prevent another monster from appearing. As of a few months ago, however, this ended with a few alarming consequences. How so? An event known as the Mass Consternation. Odd, unexplainable happenings popping up out of nowhere. In one instance, a man had evaporated like smoke in his own bedroom. A woman claimed to see God's light before slitting her own throat. What? I heard of one village that committed a mass suicide by drowning, jumping into the ocean like a pack of rats from a sinking ship. Why would they do such a thing? I don't know. It was as if they were... Martyrs suffering for the sake of avoiding retribution. It was around this time that monsters started to appear yet again, igniting fear into those who had survived to remember their ghastly deeds. Eventually, people began suspecting that the souls of these recently departed martyrs learned how to inhabit the bodies of monsters. Hence, monsters began attacking innocent people without warning. At least, that was the rumor. The name soon stuck, and these beasts you see roaming around are what we now refer to as martyrs. Crowds of frightened town-goers would look up at the sky at once and mutter, We are forsaken. I don't understand. What could compel people to end their own lives? There has to be some explanation, right? Mm. You're wise, Sheena. As you stated, we had eventually discovered the reason for the mysterious slew of mass suicides. It appears you have one attached to your lake as well. That is the mark of the Entoma, the catalyst that drives people to madness. Unfortunately, you will soon feel its effects as it slowly eats away at your mind. What? He must mean... The spider legs. Ah! What the? It's moving? Ah! It's fluttering up my skin! 
spirit! That, my dear, is proof of your curse. It has a mind of its own, ensnaring its hapless prey while slowly corrupting it over time. If inorganic matter is touched by the curse, then it eventually withers away. If it latches onto a living thing, however... Then what happens? Their brains become infected to the point that they spiral out of control. You might be a bigger threat to yourself than you think. <laughs> now that monsters in this damned entoma have all but doomed this place, there is little for anyone to do other than watch the gradual and tragic demise of our world. Goodness me, in times as bleak as these, it feels like a real labor to go on living. Uh, huh? What's the matter? Oh, nothing. I think I just have a stomachache. Oh, no! Uh, forgive me. I've spent all this time reminiscing. How rude of me. Uh, I'm fine. It'll subside in a bit. If everything you said was true, about the curse and the end of the world, then I'm so sorry. Somehow, though, I'm still happy. But how can you? It makes me think. Meeting someone new and learning something about them feels like a miracle of its own at times. When I see my reflection in someone else's eyes, I can't help but blush. For a brief moment, my life has purpose. Knowing that I matter to someone else brings me joy. It's hard to explain. Joy, huh? Yes. So, Rook, you just need to... <sighs> I'm so sorry. That was rude of me. <laughs> it's fine. Because of what you just said, I am reminded that life still holds some splendor. Thank you for sharing that beautiful sentiment. You're welcome. I've no doubt that someday we will find a way to lift the curse of the Entoma from our life. If I learn anything more about it, then you'll be the first to know. Really? Thank you. Well, guess I'll be seeing you around, Rook. The world needs me. Sheena, where are you going? I'm an adventurer. There's only one place for me to go. The place where all adventurers dream of. The mystical sky capital, Odyssea. Odyssea? Are you sure that such a place even exists? All of what I just mentioned, including Heaven's Messenger, is a little more than hearsay. Stories to scare young children. <sighs> of course it exists. Dream a little, Rook. Uh, I'm sorry. I spoke out of turn again. Oh, please. I don't mind. So, do you have any clue how to reach Odyssea? Well... Additionally, extensive travel requires adequate funds. Uh, are you well prepared? Um... <laughs> Apologies. Uh, judging by your reaction, the answer would seem to be no. Oh, come to think of it, I recall the king had announced that he was recruiting new guards. Uh, why don't you try gaining some money that way, hmm? Really? Yes, I'd love to. In that case, let me show you how to reach the palace. Follow this corner, then make a left down this path. Uh, oh, here. Here is a map. Wow, thank you. See you around. Good luck out there, young traveler. Bless you, Rook. Good luck to you, too. <laughs> what a spry thing. If the next generation has as much spirit as her, then perhaps there's hope yet for the future of our world. <laughs> uh, however, it might be too late.